What is going on Reefers? Blaine here. Today we're going to be continuing our Day in the Life series at Top Shelf Aquatics. Recently we were in the retail store and we did a big unboxing for all the fish that come into the store, but today we're going to be heading into the farm and checking out all the activities that go on to make this place tick and to bring corals to you guys at home. I've really enjoyed this series being able to share it with you all, so let's go ahead and head into the facility and see what's going on. All right, so we're here in the back with Evan. We're looking like we're doing a lot of testing here. There's a ton of water volume here in the farm. So Evan, what are you doing right now? So today is gonna be full battery day. Um, we do that every uh, Tuesday and Friday. We test all of the water samples. Um, that goes for alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, um, nitrate, phosphate, uh, as well as salinity. Um, so we're going to be testing every single one of these water samples today. So today I'm going to be doing the phosphates and nitrates while Megan's going to be taking care of the alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. You guys got here at what, 8 a.m.? You've yeah, been going since then? Okay. And we're probably going to be testing until around 1030 and then um, probably until noon once all the adjustments are done between Reef Shark hopping in apex and then manual adjustments as well. Gotcha, so quite a bit of testing to do. So currently yeah. you're working on phosphates Yep. and you were saying you have, so 33 samples to work through. How do you yeah. work through all those samples quickly and efficiently? So what I do is I run through two HANAs at once. So while I have the timer going on one HANA, um, I go ahead and start, you know, prepping for the, the next tank with the uh, the second end. And if you want to get extra crazy, you could throw a third in there. That gets so, a little too much. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. You got two <laughs> yeah. hands, then you got three hand yeah, checkers exactly. running around. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are working as a team here. You got both you guys going back and forth. And you said, how many times a week are you guys testing again? Uh, bare minimum is twice a week. Everything gets tested. But if we do have to make adjustments, whether that's increasing or decreasing, um, we'll go ahead and do follow-up tests the next couple of days. And obviously, you know, explain to everyone why it's so important for us here, especially to test, because obviously you guys are making alterations throughout all these different systems and yeah. all this water volume. There's a lot of specific things you need to look for. And how is testing going to be super important for us here at Top Shelf? It's just a matter of stability. Um, you know, especially like your tank at home, like things happen pretty fast, but here it's like, within like hours, like your alkalinity can change, your you know phosphates could bottom out. So you gotta keep a super, super close eye on it, especially when you have like all these tanks, super high light, super high flow. It's like a Formula One race car, so. Right, and there's obviously a huge amount of inventory. And yeah. we're talking about, you know, the livelihood of obviously we're working on all of these corals and all these colonies, yeah. but we're trying to also facilitate it to the hobby give exactly. out good frags to these people. So we got to make sure that we're giving up all, getting all the right kind of parameters for each individual system. And not every single system is going to be the same, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, they all have their own little personalities and, you know, quirks, stuff like that. Sweet, all right, well, I'll let you get to testing and we'll check out how it goes. All right, we've ran into Taras, our lead phycologist here on site. He is the guy that's dealing with all the critters here at Top Shelf Aquatics in the farm facility, doing all the breeding, the different kind of things. And Taras has all kinds of different projects he's got going on in the farm, but we're gonna get with him today and see what he's got going on. Well, Blaine, first and foremost, first thing I do when I walk in here is uh, fulfill my role as phycologist here at the farm. Uh, the algae is the most sensitive, it requires uh, the utmost level of sterility and care, so it's got to be done first thing in the morning, and once that's done for the day, it's got to be done. No more. So, the first thing I do when I uh, come in in the morning is I look at my algae rack and I do troubleshooting. So let's do a quick comparison today. Walk in the farm, T-Isocrises, lots of stuff can happen. This is Florida during the transition period. 
slight changes in even atmospheric pressure outside with the coming and going of a storm can and will affect the algae in ways I cannot address with the tools that I have here. But I can address whether or not the algae is at the high quality that we need at TSA. Now let's do a quick comparison of three isocrises carboys here, all inoculated around the same day. Now, I think this is a good example of what I would call A, B, and C class algae. Let's start with the C class algae. This culture right here, we see how faint it is. There's clumping that's occurred. Something has happened where the algae is not necessarily happy and it's had to clump much like our white blood cells do around invaders and something's happening. Um, so that algae for many reasons, we probably won't use. We will dump, sterilize, kill, and restart. Now we have what I would call B class algae. This algae is looking fine. It's got nice pigments going. Isocrisis is a very, very fragile, delicious cell. So if anything was really nasty happening, uh, it would have crashed by now. We can see that there's still a little bit of clumping. Um, so this is a wonderful application for something that we would feed to our cold pods, let's say here in home, where we wouldn't necessarily bottle this, but it's still perfectly fine for being able to be fed out that day. Now in the middle, A-class algae, a T. isocrisis lutea, which is exhibiting very minimal of no clumping, dark cells. We can see now that we're slowly transcending from 3 million plus cells per milliliter, entering towards that 6 million plus chocolate milk phase. So I walked over to the other side of the farm and I ran into Tim and he's over here doing inspections. I'm gonna kind of let Tim take it away and explain what he's doing looking through one of our LPS systems. Yeah, so for inspections, generally you wanna check if Coral Health is up to spec really. Uh, no bleaching, everything's nice and colorful, happy, uh, extended. You also wanna make sure all the pumps are running. Nothing's odd with the system. No algae, pests, anything. You want to make sure everything's just tip top running smoothly. Right. So you're going to go through, you're checking on everything. And obviously this is just one of the systems. We have a ton of them here in the farm. How many systems are you going through? Are you yourself checking everyone individually or is you guys, are you guys working as a team? Is there a couple individuals working around doing the inspections? So generally it's the team. Uh, we have people divided throughout the farm. I'll do one section like these three systems here. And then say Ben will do the other three systems on the other side of the farm and someone will do the middle systems. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, let's go ahead and start checking out some of these corals. And if you see anything, you can point it out. We can kind of talk it out. All right. So Tim was just saying some of these frog spawns are looking really good. So he's going to kind of talk over what he does when he's looking at individual specimens. So really what you want to check for is healthy, extended flesh along the stalk and really plump polyps. You want everything to look colorful and nothing bothering the coral at the base or around it. So we've caught up with Tim on the invert side of the farm. Tim, you said you ran into something you wanted to point out. Yeah, so here in the invert and fish system, we have a target mandarin and he's looking a little on the thin side Maybe there's not enough pods or we're not feeding him enough. So we want to definitely start adding that to the schedule, extra feeding specifically for this cubicle so that he can get more food, get him back up to health, and then he can enter in one of the other systems. Gotcha. So just one of the things you kind of catch as you're going through, and this is something you'll make note of and you'll come back to and kind of make changes for. So that way this can have a better situation moving forward. Yes, sir. Sounds good. All right, we're here with Ben. We're one of the farm technicians. We're gonna be grabbing out some corals and we're gonna be doing some fragging. Ben, what are we grabbing today? We are grabbing this beautiful specimen of Battlestar Galaxia here. As you can see, he's pretty mature, nice and big. We're gonna cut this down and we've got it here on the array right now. And the reason we do that is so that more flow can get underneath it, have the, uh, carbonate and the nutrients and everything like that so that they can photosynthesize more. You'll notice that the color on this guy isn't too great. It's mostly that purple. 
but that's because we're doing that higher light just to really boost out that growth on this colony. And when we frag it up, you're gonna see that the color will come out more as we stage it out. So let me grab a container of water here and then we'll move over to the frag room. So we use a Griffin band saw, industry standard. We use a brittle glue on all of these frags, so it's really easy to just kind of knock it off. Um, and you'll be able to do the same thing whenever you get a frag at home too. Um, so we don't use any epoxy or anything like that, just so that it's able to lift off that frag plug. I think our goal is just gonna be to shave off this edge here. You can see that's gonna be plenty of polyps that we'll be able to divide up. So they, they grow nicely. This will make, like I said, that 30 or 40 frags. Set that there, set this guy here. Let me get some iodine for this here too. Just gonna do a light dip. Nothing crazy. Uh, this is what a Galaxia skeleton looks like. Nothing but calcium carbonate right there. So I'll just be scoring and sectioning this guy into those frags now. done cutting now what's the next step here Ben? Uh, our next step here is we're gonna move over to this glue station here I'll be remounting it to uh, the PVC to go back onto the array I'll also be mounting the frags and then we've actually got something cool that we're experimenting with is these new frag plug holders so we'll, we'll be putting most of these frags actually on an array around other colonies in the in the system we try and hide the glue as best we can, and the least glue we can use, the better. Just because that'll hinder the coral less, but also um, allow for a better growth into the frag. Hey. We have a tang in here that's always curious. We'll make sure that this area here is facing forward just so we can keep an eye on it for its health for the next couple of days. again with Tim and I've caught up with him and it looks like he is working on getting a water change going for one of the systems. Tim, what are you up to, man? So right now we're working on getting a 400 gallon water change done on Sherwood, our QT system here at the farm. All right, Tim, so you've grabbed a tape measure. What's the purpose of the tape measure here? So we're going to be measuring the water volume of the system, measure out about how much we can take out per inch and then out of each three tanks to be able to take out 400 exactly. Gotcha, so you're pulling from all three of these systems doing a 400 gallon change. Yes, sir. Gotcha, sounds good, let's get into it. So all this water we're pulling out of this system, what are we gonna be doing with it? So we're gonna be using this for our maintenance accounts and any tanks we need to quick cycle. Gotcha, okay, cool. So this water is gonna be reused we're gonna end up putting it into either our maintenance accounts or any other systems throughout Top Shelf. Yes, sir. Perfect. All right, 
and that is a wrap for our day in the life at Top Shelf Aquatics for the day in the farm. It was a lot of fun being able to showcase all the things that go on in the farm facility. You guys see the end product by receiving all the frags and the amazing corals, but it takes a lot of moving pieces and a lot of smart individuals to make this happen. So big shout out to every single person involved in today's video. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to shove a camera in your face get into your work environment and see what you guys do on the daily basis. If you guys enjoyed this video and you wanna see more of the Top Shelf Day in the Life series, drop a comment down below and let me know what you wanna see next. If you guys have hung out all the way till the end, I wanna say thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads.